is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to look at the Barnes & Noble Nook HD. This is the latest Nook from Barnes & Noble with the color LCD display. 7 inches highest resolution among 7 inch tablets right now. 1440 by 900 so you get really sharp clear text among other things. We're going to look at it now. This is the Barnes & Noble Nook HD. This is currently the latest generation Nook LCD tablet that's available from Barnes & Noble, the bookseller you know and hopefully love if you're interested in this product. They also make the HD Plus, which is an 8.9 inch tablet. This is the 7 inch tablet and it sells for a price that's very competitive with the Amazon Kindle Fire HD. It's $199 for the 8 gig version and $229 for the 16 gig. So, ah, for 16 gigs it's a little bit more expensive, $229 versus $199 for the Fire HD. But we're talking close enough that $30 really shouldn't sway your decision. You should base it on features and, and which bookstore you actually prefer using instead. So take a look around. From the front you can see that it actually looks different now from, from the last generation Nook color tablet. Gone is the interesting little lanyard hook kind of design that was very distinctive and the, the metal style surround. This looks more like the regular Nook. As you can see it does have a reflective display despite what all these manufacturers say about their anti-reflective LCD e-reading devices, it reflects. And if we take a look at the back here, this looks a lot more like the Nook e-ink readers. It's a plastic back, it's very ergonomic, it's got a nice little molded inset here, soft touch, kind of grippy. So it doesn't go for that kind of more expensive look than the Nook Color and the Nook Tablet did. Here's your stereo speakers right here, and while we're taking a look at the back, we'll look at the traditional e-ink Nook with low light to compare the look of the two. So here we have the back view. This is the ink nook with a simple touch with low light over here. So you can see the same design, darker plastic on the back, but the same inset, a little bit deeper on the ink nook, but very much of a family. If we look around at the sides, you can see we have more shiny plastic. It says, look, I'm shiny plastic. It's your power button over here. On the bottom, we have the 30-pin proprietary charging and data transfer port. Now, that's a little bit annoying versus micro USB that other tablets use because, gosh, you probably have micro USB for your smartphone and other products, and it would be nice to just keep using the same cable. So why does BNN do this? Not just to be difficult and ruin your day. They do this because they can use a higher amp charger that charges more quickly. And, in fact, this does charge very quickly, so they're not kidding about that. The proprietary connector... It means also no MHL out for HDMI. There is no HDMI port on this either, unlike the Kindle Fire HD, but Barnes & Noble says they are going to make an adapter that plugs into this 30-pin port to give you HDMI out. One thing that's really cool and very special right here, you see that? We've got this little door right here. We have a SD card slot. Open that up, and then there's space for a micro SD card. So you can expand storage. That's something you can't do on the Kindle Fire HD or the iPad mini. So really great if you want to add extra books. The books don't really take up that much room, so you're probably not worrying about that. But videos, photos, multimedia content, your music, that sort of stuff. And also you have the option when you download some content to actually save it to the SD card instead, like movies, if you don't want to fill up your internal storage. On this side here we have the two little volume control rocker buttons right here. And up top we have the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And again, on the back, we have the stereo speakers right over here. Now, some early reviews said that this was a very quiet tablet, but there have been firmware updates. So if you look at those very earliest reviews that are on the net, things have changed since then. The, the device is no longer sluggish by any means. It's actually a little zippier than the Kindle Fire HD. And audio volume output, while well, not as great as the Kindle Fire HD, because that's the best seven inch tablet we've heard, is certainly loud enough that you can hear it in a quiet room very easily. And here we have the Nook HD next to the Kindle Fire HD, both 7-inch tablets. Obviously wider here with the Kindle Fire. As we mentioned, it's also a couple ounces heavier, a little bit heavier for the Kindle Fire HD. And if we put them on top of each other, you can see that height-wise, you're looking at the same thing, but the Kindle Fire HD does have a wider bezel, just a wider device all in all. And we'll have a smackdown of these two e-reader tablet combo, so if you're having trouble to decide, maybe that'll help you. The Nook HD is available in two colors, smoke or snow, that's marketing lingo for gray or white. Both look equally nice to me, so it's just your matter of personal preference there. And it has a 1440 by 900 pixel IPS display. That's a big selling point, because like I said, currently that's the highest resolution you're going to find in a 7-inch Android tablet, or any tablet right now for that matter. 
and that gives you 243 ppi pixel density that's very high that's better than the kindle fire hd that's better than the ipad mini not as high as the ipad with retina display or the nexus 10 tablet made by samsung with a super high resolution display but honestly once you're hitting something like 230 or 240 ppi it's pretty hard to tell the difference between that and 260 ppi it's just very sharp really really razor sharp text I, if you have very good eyes and you get very close maybe you could try to see some of those dots that make up the fonts but for most of us holding this at normal reading distance no you won't videos really nice good blacks a very bright display brighter than the kindle fire hd i don't ever use it at maximum brightness because it's pretty much an eyeball burner the tablet weighs 11.1 ounces that makes it a little bit lighter than the kindle fire hd and yeah i do actually notice the difference kindle fire hd just feels a little heavy in hand after i've been holding it for half an hour or so this guy feels just a little bit lighter because it is and it's 0.43 inches thick so not excruciating thin like the ipad mini but again really more designed for holding and being comfortable when you're reading still the primary purpose of this device and if you take a look at the user interface with the paper background as they call it first we go to the home screen kind of a, a papery slightly gray background here you can change your background if you want to by the way but we've got some personalization here now there's no ads on here unlike the kindle fire with offers that doesn't mean that you're not going to see little places where they're opportunistically suggesting that you look at and buy other stuff though but you won't have a screensaver that wakes up and says look buy an ultrabook or something like that so here we have some of the stuff that i've most recently downloaded or been looking at magazines books applications and it says your nook today and this is good afternoon lisa because once you personalize it it does that it adds your name there and it knows what time of day it is so you'll see good morning good evening good afternoon and if you tap your little nook today it drops down and shows you more stuff so you get the weather kind of handy kind of a tablet like feature and here we go it's based on what i'm interested in it thinks i need to buy a bunch of stephen king books right now more choices based on my interests so that's what i'm talking about some of this is a little bit of a selling opportunity right here but that could be actually useful if you're looking for new books to buy and to close that back up you just tap on it and the circle joins up the ui is just full of all these cutesy little things that make you feel good it's a very nice very consumer friendly product in that way and a little more cohesive maybe than the kindle fire ui with the carousel of apps and books and videos all thrown together that kind of look nasty in landscape mode this just happens to look pretty either direction and the degree of personalization is nice and there, there's how it looks in landscape mode you don't get any big blown out icons that start to look bad or anything like that it maintains pretty much the same size no matter what and your navigation just switches to the side and at the bottom here you see here you can always search your nook for content in case you got so much on here you just can't find it and you don't want to go looking around so we have shortcuts for our library for apps for the web browser email and shop so if we take a look at library this is the presentation pretty easy to understand pretty attractive looking again it works in portrait and landscape mode so we'll switch back so here we've got all of my books that are available both the ones that are actually on the device and ones that are available on the cloud which means things that i have purchased or samples that i have requested from bnn's website a side loaded content is not showing up here that's going to show under my personal content magazines right here anything that's a little cloud symbol means right now it's up on the server and i can download that issue if i'm interested in it Here's some side-loaded movies that I've put here, and it's not giving me any thumbnails for those. Not sure why that is. My apps also presented the same way as books and other content, which I think is kind of weird. I would, would like to see it not done that way. And children's books. And by the way, children's books are still done really nicely on Nook. That's one thing Barnes & Noble focused on. Kindle has some nice stuff too, but there's often more interactivity in the kids' books that are available for Nook HD. And catalogs, that's something new. You know those paper catalogs that you get in the mail that probably sit by your toilet or something like that? Well, they're not dead yet, and you don't have to kill trees if you're into them. Right here, you can see we have the Harry and David catalog. There are other catalogs available, and you can actually peruse those catalogs digitally, and you can actually take scrapbook sheets, just tear off a sheet virtually, and save it if there's a product that you're interested in. And we've got newspapers over here, my shelves. For anything that I've created, if I want to create my own custom shelf of stuff that I like, and here is my scrapbook. I had pulled off a picture from that Harry and David catalog. And there we have chocolate covered pears, just so I won't forget them. Nice looking, can pinch zoom in and out. Easy to use. Press the nook button, we go back home again.
And here are the books that I have sideloaded. These are EPUB books. This is an EPUB reader. Barnes & Noble does EPUB. EPUB is a pretty popular standard. It was the first thing that libraries started to use before they added support for Amazon format. And other online bookstores use EPUB with standard Adobe DRM. And this supports this. You can authorize this with Adobe Digital Edition. So it means you can do library books with this, Google Books, Sony Reader Bookstore, and Kobo Bookstore. Those are all compatible with this. Of course, also Barnes & Noble books are compatible. Now, no book covers here, but I have all my books and they look fine, and we'll take a look at one of those. And this is a 1.3 GHz dual-core TI OMAP CPU, very fast and responsive. Again, it's a little bit faster than the Kindle Fire HD 7 inches CPU. So, absolutely responsive, great looking text that's just so nice and sharp. And what's cool is that you get so much customization available here, too. Here's our slider if you just want to navigate through using a slider to get to a point. You can also go to each chapter here, table of contents. You can just check out any highlights and notes you've made and your bookmarks. And for formatting, you have a lot of options here. You've got several background colors, several serif and sans serif fonts. We've got Georgia as the default right here. We have Dante, we've got Gil Sans, Ascender Sans, Mundo Sans. Many, many sizes for, for reading, so this should accommodate both people with eagle eyes and those who have pretty weak vision. And the usual line spacing and margin setting as well. And then you can just hit go with publisher defaults, which is a pretty common thing too, and go with whatever the publisher set for margins, line spacing, and all that kind of thing. And then we have the search, so you can search for a word or phrase, and this is what the on-screen keyboard looks like when you do that. And up here is where you tap if you want to create a bookmark. So, uh, a nice reading device, certainly very sharp text, a lot of, lot of settings that you can use to customize the text to, to your liking. And if you want to... And if you want to get to settings, say you want to change your brightness right up here, we have quick access to your Wi-Fi settings. You can change your brightness right here. Lock rotation, so if you're wobbling about while you're reading, it's not going to change the landscape and back and forth on you and get to all settings. So that's also pretty easy. And we have dictionary lookup here. Press and hold on a word. And we have the option to add a highlight, add a note, look it up, or find it again in the book. So if we look it up, there's our nice little inline definition. And we can also hit up the Wikipedia if we want or look it up in Google. So nice touch there. Barnes & Noble has always done a beautiful job with magazines, and so far I have felt like you really need a 10-inch tablet to read magazines. After all, in this view right here that we're looking at, this is just a reprint, basically, of what you get in the actual physical magazine, which, generally speaking, has a much larger page. But because of the high pixel density here, things are actually readable, even if you're looking at just in straight magazine view. And you can see it's pretty fast and responsive. These are very rich pages for going back and forth, and you can use this in landscape mode as well, but honestly most of these pages make more sense if you have them in portrait mode. And then we have the reading view, article view right here. So say you're interested, you saw that pretty graphic, and now you want to actually be able to read the text very easily. There it is. So nicely done as always. We can switch back to magazine view. And then if you tap again, you can see you can get to your page slider right here, so you have a graphical representation of the pages that you're interested in. You can choose page numbers as well. So all in all, it's pretty nice, and for a 7-inch reader, it's the most enjoyable one yet I've found for reading magazines versus 10-inch tablets. Catalogs are handled the same way that magazines are, and as you saw, there's a scrapbooking feature we showed you that works for magazines and it works for catalogs. It does not work for books probably because they're worried about copyright. They don't want you tearing out virtual pages of uh, copyrighted books and sharing them with folks. Now for apps, here's our little apps presented in, well, the usual app icon way, kind of large, easy to do. We do have basic PIM application, we have calendar, we have contacts, we got our web browser, and I have some applications that I've downloaded including Evernote here and Hulu Plus. Yes, you can do Netflix on this, which is great for those of you who like that streaming service. Looks quite nice, by the way, does a good job with the HD screen. One thing about the PIM applications and the email application, uh, it's not like a straight Android tablet where it's just easy, you, you sign in and everything's handled nicely. This really treats uh, all Google stuff, Google Contacts, Google Calendar, and, and Gmail as an IMAP service. It's really geared towards more handly exchange. In fact, I would say that the Kindle Fire actually does the whole Gmail and Google ecosystem a little bit better here, so mm, there's that. 
Also, in terms of applications, of the top applications, you'll find about two-thirds of the ones that are available on Amazon that are available on the Barnes & Noble Nook Store. The only place you can install apps from is Barnes & Noble's application store. They have about 10,000 apps. Amazon has about 50,000 on their app store. And I think we're up to about 600,000 for Android, including both phone and tablet applications. So you get an idea that you're getting just a smaller percentage. And that's one of the drawbacks, I feel, with the Nook tablets in general. For those of you who actually want to make this be dual purpose, not just use it for reading books, looking at magazines, and maybe even watching some movies, uh, the application ecosystem is, for, relatively speaking, much more limited. And it's also harder to install stuff. If you go to settings on this, settings is pretty limited. We'll take a look at all settings. There's no app option to allow installation of non-market apps. That means for those of you who are a little bit more techy and geeky, if you can pull your applications off of your other Android device, put them on an SD card or a Dropbox or something like that, you can install those on a Kindle Fire, but you can't do that here because it'll tell you that that's blocked and there is no option to turn it on. What we do have is general settings, things like screen timeout. We've got wireless and Bluetooth settings, and yes, it does have Bluetooth, so you can do things like use a Bluetooth stereo speaker set or headphones with it. And for applications, any settings that pertain to any of the applications that you have built in here. Basic device information, storage information, how much stuff you got in there, and account management for adding your Barnes & Noble account, your MS Exchange account, stuff like that, and your Google credentials. So, a bit more limited there. Thanks to the CPU that's on here, that 1.3 GHz dual core, it's pretty responsive. So, for things like gaming, it holds up just fine. And as I mentioned, with the firmware update that came out just when the product was released, it's gotten quite speedy. It's not laggy at all, as you've seen here. It's responsive, it's easy to use, applications run fine. I have not had any problems with that. If you want to look at photographs, you're going to use the Android Gallery application, because yes, just like with the previous Nook tablets and with uh, Kindle also tablets, this is running Android, and this is running Ice Cream Sandwich, Android 4.0, same thing as a Kindle Fire HD, likewise heavily skinned, as Barnes & Noble always does. Now, if you want to root this guy, if you're mega geeky, you can go ahead and root this guy, and then you can probably put on uh, all sorts of applications to your heart's content, maybe even gain access to the Google Play Store. But honestly, now that we have the, the Nexus 7 available, a 7-inch tablet for $199, for those of you who really want the, the basic full-featured Android tablet, there's less of a point to doing that. You might as well just get the Nexus if you're real hungry to get that whole complete Google experience going on here. And we have the standard Android WebKit web browser built in here. Very capable, very fast. It does very well in SunSpider JavaScript tests where lower numbers are better. It scored 1274, and that's a lot better than Kindle Fire. It scored 1740, so in comparison. And that puts us actually ahead of a lot of standard Android tablets and smartphones. The good news for speed is that. The, the bad news is this, yes, it does have Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn. It's good to have N for speed, but it's single band. It's 2.4 gigahertz only, no 5 gigahertz, no dual band there. Now, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz are equally as fast. The thing is that 5 gigahertz picks up less interference, so you often get much better throughput. So you're not going to have that option here, unlike the Kindle Fire HD, the iPad Mini, and a lot of other Android smartphones and tablets these days. Not sure why. I know they're trying to get this thing to be as cheap as a Fire HD and still make some money on it, but I'm still not sure why they actually had to leave out the second band there. It's too bad with Wi-Fi. But not a heartbreaker, not the end of the world. Just If you live in a, say, a New York City apartment where there's a lot of Wi-Fi congestion or you got Bluetooth devices, then you may run into some degradation of throughput on the 2.4 gigahertz band. But the browser itself, very fast, very responsive. Pinch zooming is pretty smooth. We're not talking laggy there. And this supports HTML5 video. It does not come with Adobe Flash because Adobe no longer wants to supply Flash for Android devices. They say we're out of that mobile business there. You can see we've got the article view, something just like the magazines now. On this particular page, it wouldn't make much sense. So in this UI here, we scroll around to bring up the control bars. You can see we have a bookmark symbol right there. You get to bookmarks. We have the plus if you want to add another tab for tab browsing. We have sharing, we have download the web page, we have search, and we have our article view over here. Now if you want to actually get the full browser settings, you actually have to go to the system settings, system-wide settings. They're kind of treating this more like the iPad rather than Android devices there, which is a little bit weird. But let's go to a review and then test out article view.
So here we are in a review of the Lenovo IdeaPad Yoga, and we're going to test out Article View, see how that does. And basically it strips away all the HTML and just gives you the text. Keeps the pictures there, keeps the pictures in a nice quality as well. So that's kind of handy if you find some web pages just too busy to read. And we just tap the button to go back to Browser View. So we're in the shop interface right here. You can see we have spotlights on things like games and applications just for teens. And we've got books, magazines, movies, and TV, kids, apps, newsstand, and catalogs. So if we take a look at movies and TV, you can see that they've grown quite a good selection of titles so far. Now, there's nothing like the Amazon Prime subscription model here, the Netflix subscription model. So all of these, you're typically going to pay $4.99 to rent an HD movie or $19.99 for a current movie if you want to actually buy it. So if we take a look at top movies, we've got new releases, a variety of sorts there, or you can just search too. We've got the Avengers available here, Sex and the City, Batman Begins, The 300, and if we go back to take a look at new releases, if we take a look at new releases, you can see we have Men in Black 3, Brave, the latest Spider-Man movie. So pretty good content there, and say we're interested in the Avengers. Let's tap on that. And here you can rent it for $4.99 in HD, buy it for $20, bucks. and we've got a little drop-down. And there's the SD option. Uh -huh. Once you tap on it, they just don't want, they don't want you to see that. They want you to go for the HD version, which understandably would look sharper, but $3.99 to rent your SD version, $4.99 for the full HD. And then you have the option of buying it as well. And you get a little snippet, you get review, you get information about it. So there's your video content of the commercial kind, TV shows as well. And so for TV shows, you can see we have HBO content here, we have The Sopranos, we also have things like Happily Divorced, Bar Rescue, Entourage is available. So certainly enough stuff to keep you entertained. And again, there's Hulu Plus and Netflix as well. And if I want to get to my own sideloaded content, that is I plugged in USB cable to my computer and copied some movie trailers onto here, I, we could get to them from the library here. I saw something that day, something I'll not forget. And now you can hear how loud the speakers are. It stands 12 feet tall. In terms of volume, we're almost at maximum right now, so not super loud, but Easy enough to hear in a quiet room like this. And it plays a 1080p just fun. Of course, this is a 720p screen, so unless you get that HDMI adapter, there's no real need for 1080p, but it does, it handles it very nicely. One thing to note here, there is no camera front or rear. There is no front camera for things like Skype. It's something that you will find on even the Nexus 7 tablet and the Kindle Fire HD tablets does come with a music playing application. It's pretty much your standard Android music player. It handles MP3 format, AAC, things without DRM. You can sideload content to your heart's content. And of course there's support for children's books here. Let me take a look at that real quick because they do it so well. And also there are parental permissions you can set up here. So you can set this up so your kids don't have access to some stuff. And we can have it read to us. Richard Scarry's Colors. Red. Greenbug's tomato car is red. Loli's apple car is red. So is his sneaker. And you can jump around the pages Fire here. Fire engines are red. And there are some books for you. that are interactive, so you tap on them to do things, and otherwise it's pretty handy. It is the Sergeant parrot that can read to your kid. Barnes & Noble claims up to about 10 hours of battery life here, and so far we're seeing about 8.5 to 9 hours, which is about average for a 7-inch tablet. Nothing to complain about there, especially given how bright the display is. If you run the display at max brightness, you will shorten your battery life. We've noticed that. But that said, the display is so bright that I find that I pretty much don't want to go above 50% when using this indoors.
So that's the Barnes & Noble Nook HD and 7-inch tablets available now. Very reasonably priced, a really great e-reader for those people who particularly are focused on reading books because the reading application is awesome. You don't get things like Amazon Prime Video as we mentioned, so if, if that's not important to you, then hey, who cares? You can play video, there are video rentals. Nice offering. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review of the Nook HD and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.